All right, so uh, before everyone comes in, uh, I'm just going to give you a small introduction to what jQuery Mobile is. So I might as well actually just show you the demo itself. Oh, shit, I don't have the demo right here. Oh, I'm sorry, actually, there's no internet connection, I think, is there? So what jQuery Mobile essentially allows you to do is you can quickly build applications for mobile devices. Now, there are a lot of these frameworks promising these claims, and you might wonder, why not just start from scratch? Why not just go ahead and do it like how Facebook and LinkedIn and all these days do it, you know? We're one of the cool kids who have HTML5 mobile applications. The reason is that essentially this helps you get all this stuff done much faster. It keeps in mind the human interface guidelines of all these mobile device manufacturers. It takes all the quirks between different mobile devices into account, and it does a couple of other nearly neat things, like, for example, uh, uh, you know, degradation, proper degradation, and stuff like that. So I guess I'll just get started. So my name is Anil Sanjeev. Uh, I'm currently working in a Bangalore startup, and I'm building a dashboard framework for web and mobile devices. So if you're, I mean, obviously we're getting people in. I graduated from two, IIT Kharagpur, and I've interned at Google and Microsoft Research. And this is essentially the application that we're going to be building. It's a simple phone book where all of the phone numbers and names have been stored inside. It's been stored inside a, some medium. So right now we're just going to be using a JavaScript object to store all the data, but later on you can store it somewhere else. You can open up one of the records and you can see a contact over here. You can see the phone numbers in a nice list manner and you can even edit it and you can update it and save it and this would reflect. So if you want, I can actually use, up the, use the app and show it to you. So I have over here, I can add a new name over here. Uh, let's just say Rahul. Or you can add an additional phone number and you save it and it adds it over here. You can open it up and you can go back here and you can edit it. As you can see, the I'm not sure about how the colors and the fonts look over here, but I can clearly tell you that it does look and feel really good on a mobile device. In fact, if you have a mobile device right now and if you're interested, you can open up static.skyronic.com slash jsfoo and you find a link to the slides and you can also find a link to the application that we're building. So I'm first going to warn you about what jQuery Mobile is. You can build fantastic applications which are touch friendly, and you can do it with very little code. The amount of less code you need to write is actually surprisingly, you know, it'll actually astound you. There are fantastic themes that come out of the box, and the themes are built using CSS gradients. So I mean, if so, this means that you don't need images, and you can also make some modifications which will reflect across the entire thing. And they're also building a theme roller-like application for jQuery Mobile, so you can actually just go and quickly use a form to reconfigure the entire thing. The applications degrade gracefully, which means that even if you open it with a browser with le less JavaScript support, or if you open it with a lower JavaScript support, it was designed in such a way that as much as possible, your user experience is as good as possible. And you can do it without any CSS or JS code. It's surprisingly easy. I'll actually show it to you. So, and it uses very few images. There are a few caveats, though. One of them, the first one, is you need to write your app again from scratch. You cannot drop in jQuery Mobile into your existing web-based application and magically get a touch-based framework. It just won't happen. You have to build everything from scratch, and you need to do it keeping the jQuery Mobile framework in mind. The second problem is that even though there are a lot of these list forms, buttons, and sliders, go back, check out jQuerymobile.com slash demo or something, and you can see that there are some fantastic forms which look and feel really well, and you know, there are different themes, different buttons with icons, they're all there. But leveraging these existing CSS classes, leveraging these uh, functionalities is slightly difficult. Of course, there are some ridiculously ugly portions as well. I mean, as one of the things I'm going to try to tell you is I'm going to give you forewarning about how bad it can actually be. One of the first things to do, it will actually mangle the entire DOM. The things that you write, you will give it one form of HTML, and it will pick it up, and it will completely mangle it. The reason, there are actually very good reasons why it needs to do this in order to give the kind of functionality, but what this means is a lot of code that you expect to work will not work. 
you take a div and then you try to find its parent, it might be one, your another list item might be a parent in your regular code. But when you actually execute it, something else might be the parent and you won't even know what happened. So usually debugging these kind of programs is slightly more complicated. Another problem is dynamically creating the UI is complex. And dynamically modifying the UI is even more complex than that. So here's the first thing I'm going to show you. It's a relatively simple it's just a relatively simple piece without any CSS or JavaScript. I have a div over here, never mind what the data role is, but so when you have a data role inside a uh, DOM attribute, it is essentially a system that is essentially an attribute which tells jQuery mobile how to treat your thing and how to decorate it. And you specify here's a data role which says page, here's a data role which says header, here's a data role which says content. And here I have a link over here to hash page 2. And over here I have an ID called page 2 with a header content and something over here as well. And when I load it up inside a browser, so over here it just says I am page 1, this is page 2. Can everyone see this? So when I click on this, it gives me a nice neat little transition. So over here, and if I press the back button, I actually can see that the transition happens again. The more interesting portion is that the moment I click on this, page 2, can you see this uh, fragment over here? It's set in a way such that if I copy this, paste it, and open a new one in, say, page 2, it opens page 2 by default. This means that the moment the page loads, it actually looks at the fragment over there, or what, we, or what is known as inside jQuery Mobile, the hash. And then it makes its decision upon that and it displays it. So there's another even neater thing that happens over here where I'm going to show you two pages. There's one neat1.html over here and there is neat2.html. Neat1.html links to neat2.html. Neat2.html links to neat1.html. Let me just open it up and I will open up this So it just says I am page one, this is page two. I click on it, it works fine. It exactly, you know, it works exactly as you're expecting to work. Even if I even if I right click and say, even if you press and you like tap and hold on it and you say open a new tab, it opens up, everything works the same. But what very interesting happens is let me open up the inspector. Okay, I don't think certain portions you can see over here. Uh, hold on one sec. Let me just Yeah, can everyone see the... All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load page one. Or So over here, you see that this works fine. But when I click on the page one link, it actually does not load anything else at all. What actually happens is that it opens up the link in an XML HTTP request, it picks up the DOM, it looks at the first div data role equal to page, picks that up and then adds it and does the transition. And this works seamlessly. And if you actually look at it, the URL stays correct. It actually leverages what is known in the HTML5 world as push state, where you can actually change the URL without actually changing the page. So it's pretty neat stuff, but we'll be doing some stuff similar to it when So the data role attribute is essentially telling jQuery mobile what functionality to add. So you show this during the time of page load and it goes and it instruments it with certain kind of functionality. It can be a button, it can be a footer, there are plenty of them and these are very well documented on the website. And similarly there are a lot of these other data hash, data something else, like for example you've got icons. So I can have a button and I can specify the icon of that. I can specify the footer, the position of the footer. And these are all done using the data attributes as well. There are a couple of key concepts to remember. First thing is that the data thing has to be available on page load. I will tell you that this is the default behavior, but it can also be circumvented. You can do it and you can build it in a way such that it's done after the page load. 
and it will modify the DOM, so your old code will not expect it. So I'll show you. For example, here's a button. Here's a button which is a href equal to button, data role is button, icon is delete, and this is what it looks like. But after jQuery mobile goes and what is known as decorates or instruments or adds functionality to this device, it comes in and it becomes so much larger. And the main reason is that it goes around, as I said, you take a, you have an A and you've got a lot of these spans over here. So even if you say A dot text, if you say, so for example, if I had A and I had an ID of some button, my button, and I say dollar hash my button dot text equal to something else, you expect that the delete will get changed. But what actually happens is that all of these inner items over here will go and get modified. So this is what I mean by saying that you cannot expect your old code to blindly work. Another, for example, is a checkbox. A checkbox which is so reasonably simple. You just have a field set, you, sell, you specify a data role as a field set, an input and a label, and it becomes this big. I mean, literally the whole code explodes. And I can show it to you in the inspector, but I mean, that will be really small, but you can make out that the amount of code that it inserts, and these are all with good reason. By leveraging CSS classes, they're making sure that after one download of jQuery mobile CSS, your mobile app will load better every time. So here's a core page. You have a data role as a page, a header, a content, and a footer. You can have any number of pages inside your application, and you can probably switch between pages, but only one page can be displayed at a time. So a page is pretty much the atomic word or atomic level of display as far as jQuery mobile is concerned. So here's what we're going to start doing. We're going to build a simple phone book application. So in your index.html, there's nothing special. You need to specify this meta name of a viewport that is available and it's done in every uh, example that's there inside jQuery mobile. You need to specify, you need to just give it a CSS, the jQuery mobile JavaScript and the jQuery minified JavaScript as well and any custom JavaScript you want to execute. So we're going to do something known as custom routes. So while regular routes of jQuery, which is loading the page, it works fine. We're actually going to be trying to do a lot of things very dynamically. Of course, it's perfectly possible to you have a PHP script, pick up phone books from a database and render it in such a way that you don't even need to do anything. But what we're going to be doing is actually going to be looking for fragments and we're actually going to intercept when jQuery comes in and we're going to tell it which page to load. So this way you'll actually have the app be being dynamic and yet it will be pretty bookmarkable. But we also need to override the default behavior, but it will be slightly complicated, so we'll get started doing it. So here's the conditions that we have. The, when the URL is hash contact 2, we show the contact page of entry number 2. When URL is hash edit of 2, entry number 2 ka edit page. And then when URL is hash add contact, you show the new contact page, otherwise the home page. Simple enough. So the first thing we do is we bind to an event called before page change. Now the before page change event is fired before the page gets loaded. So whether it's the first time or any kind of page change that happens, this event is loaded. What we do is we check that the type of the data dot to page is a string. If it is a string, that means it's a URL and we have to intercept it. If it's not a string, it's probably some kind of an internal state trans transition happening inside the application. If it's not a string, we just say return and the default behavior takes place. We pick up the hash part, which is $.mobile, and we pass the URL, we pick up the hash, and we split it by hyphen. Now, we, pick, we assume an index of minus one, and we take the index. So ultimately, this is a relatively straightforward code. The code is available, but ultimately, the important thing is, if the first hash part is contact, we show the first contact, show the contact page, and pass the index to it. If it's edit, we call a function called show edit page. If it is add contact, we call a function called show add page. This is all inside, and then at the end we say eve.prevent default. This is very important. Because if we don't call this, then it would do all of our code, and then it would go back and go to the previous behavior, which is going to be uh, opening up the home page or whatever it is. So the custom routes, you've got an app object over here. You show the contact page, edit page, and add page. These are just three empty functions that we'll be adding some stuff. Now we also add a phone book over here. The phone book is nothing but a small key value store, a name, and an array of phone numbers. Relatively straightforward, so I'll just move ahead. So we are going to build the home page right now. So to build the home page, this is HTML that we're going to have. And I want you to focus on a few key items over here. So the first thing over here, we have the header with a button called add contact over here. The data role is button and we have an icon over here. This is what we, this is going to do. We have a small header one called phone book which comes in and comes in over here. And over here we have this item called data role list view. 
So if you take a UL, an, un, what that, an unordered list, and then you add some list items, and you give it a data role list view, so it gives you a nice touch-friendly list if it's an icon of, what that, it's a bunch of icons. So what we do is we actually do something called, we actually hook onto a page, the like dollar home page, and we say page in it. So we hook onto the page event init event, which is fired before the page is initialized. So what we actually are going to do is we're going to tell jQuery Mobile, okay, when the page is being decorated, when it actually goes in, looks at the DOM, scans the DOM, and says, okay, fine, here are all the data roles. I'm going to go instrument them in this kind of format. Before this happens, you know, you probably want to do all of these things. So that is what we're going to do. And we're going to call this function called refresh phone book inside the app object. The refresh phone book, first it does is that it initializes the page if it's not already initialized. There are a couple of cases where this might be possible, but by dollaring dollar home page dot page, it is that's the way it works. If you worked with jQuery UI, you'll find something like this very familiar. You'll find dollar hash something dot button. And that's very straightforward because it actually uses the jQuery UI uh, widget system underneath all of the code. And I have this thing called contact list over here. In fact, this code I've sort of given you separately. Contact list, it goes and it empties all the items inside. And it runs through the phone book and it appends nothing but list items. It appends, it runs through all of the parts of the phone book and it appends the list item along with the name. And it calls this function. This is very important. So now if you don't call this, all it does is that it shows you a regular HTML list, which is nothing but three links over there. And it looks really out of place. The only way you can tell jQuery Mobile, jQuery Mobile already thinks that, okay, fine. I went to this list view DOM. I decorated it. I didn't find anything over there. I went out. But you need to actually tell it, okay, go back over there and refresh it. The way you force it is, again, this is one thing which I found which wasn't very well documented, but you say list view and you pass this string refresh. And once you do that, it actually goes and refreshes the entire list view. So this is how the DOM looks before refresh runs. And if you want, you can see how the DOM looks after the refresh runs. So if you see over here, I don't know, but ultimately this is the UL that you have over here. And you've got li div div a. So ultimately, there are, it goes and it modifies and adds a lot of classes over here. And these are the things that make it look the way it should look. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to build a contact page. For the contact page, if you remember, now we're just going to show you the small contact page over here. We're going to have a small thing called hash home page. And we are, we're going to basically create a link, a button that goes back to the home page. Now, the funny thing is that if you add this button and it, the default transition is it slides. It slides as if going to the next page. Now, obviously, this looks very unintuitive because if you press the back button, it actually should go in the opposite direction. So you say data transition is slide, and the direction of the animation is going to be reverse. So again, you're specifying all of this inside the DOM itself instead of having to go and using some kind of a jQuery uh, dictionary to configure all of this stuff. And you also have an edit button, which we will be adding some functionality to later on. And we have... Uh, some content, which is a phone, again, with an empty list view inside it. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to initialize the contact page. This is a, because since we're calling this function right after trapping this, like, uh, ultimately when the page loads, it calls and it says, okay, here's the, the, here is the URL fragment, and we took the URL fragment, we saw, okay, the contact page is the one that we need to call. So before we actually modify the contact page, we need to make sure that jQuery Mobile has initialized the contact page. So we do that by saying dollar contact page dot page. If you do this 10 times, it does not matter because the first time you do it, it does everything. And the next times you do it, it does not make any difference. So first thing you do, you pick up the item from the index of the phone book and you take the name label, set the text, you take the phone list, empty it, and append nothing but list items over here. So this is essentially a list which is a static list. And you run the phone list, dollar phone list dot list view and you say refresh again. And as for the edit button, you just set the href, the URL, as hash edit hyphen something, which will be handled by the edit page. So that's it. And if you see it, and if I go over here, and if I look at the edit, I don't know if you see it over here, but it says hash edit hyphen zero. So that is essentially what is going to happen. So yeah, the problem with that is 
it allows you to, like ultimately nobody is stopping you from actually going to the DOM and making the modifications. But to actually do that, you need to be able to maintain the consistency in all the classes and stuff like that. So for that, that it does not, it's not that it doesn't allow you the, free, the freedom to do it. You have the freedom to do whatever you want. But because you're playing by its rules, because the way it makes its modifications is like this. So in order for it to support buttons, icons and buttons, field sets and all of these things, these are certain decisions that the developers of jQuery Mobile have made such that these kind of things are possible. So the, for the colors, see, the main thing is I'll actually be going and explaining how we're going to dynamically update the thing. So the main thing over here is when you're dynamically changing the thing, you can modify the CSS. Ultimately, it's just a web page. So you can pretty much do anything you want. But the moment you're actually going and you're breaking your head over their code, then you find that it's difficult. So if you stick to this, like for example, if you have a regular website, you just have a regular website, you just want, you know, it's just an about me and all of these some five, six different links, and you just want to show a mobile version of the same site, then this is fantastic. Just put a bunch of link items over here, set the data role, add this, no CSS, no JavaScript, and suddenly you have a lovely touch-friendly website. So that is where this really shines. But on the other hand, like a small side deviation, if you're actually familiar with Centra Touch, so Centra Touch is a framework developed by uh, the ext.js guys, the Centra guys. So they actually go on a simply, completely different approach. What they say is that everything has to be done programmatically. You go and then you specify a list view item and then you know you do all of this similar to how you do it in GTK or something like that. And that works for some people, this works for some people. So this one is the one that we have chosen for our development right now. And so this is why I'm telling you. So. Sorry? Yeah. So JQ Touch is also another, see there are three main things, jQuery Mobile, JQ Touch and this. So JQ Touch as far as I know was started by Sencha Labs. I mean I think it's still part of Sencha Labs. So as far as I've heard it's very heavy on images, it's surprisingly good on iPhones because it uses the WebKit transitions and things like that but on Android it doesn't work as effectively. And it's not very well maintained and not very actively maintained and not that much. See, the number, amount of code generated is primarily like this because if you look at the CSS, actually I'm trying to contribute patches to jQuery mobile. I've actually contributed four or five pull requests so far. And I've had to break my head over their classes. And but the more I actually saw it, I saw that actually it makes sense. You see, they're actually pretty smart people who have been going around, who have been designing this. I mean, John Rezig and a lot of these other people, are, I mean, none of the names come to mind right now, but a lot of really smart people have actually thought about this and said, okay, probably this is the best way of going forward. So you're not limited by choice, but yes, this definitely has its drawback. As I said, like that's the first thing I mentioned, if you remember, it does modify your DOM. So your old code won't work. But as long as you keep that in mind, if you keep that in mind while you're building your applications, then you're going to have a much easier time. So, yeah, it's actually like if I if I can get an internet connection, I'll actually show a small demo of the real full stack of jQuery Mobile. So probably you can get more interested. So this is actually a very important portion that I need to tell you about. So. When you say, when to change a page from one page to another, you can change a page to anything. You can change a page to a particular URL, you can change a page to uh, three, four other different things. You know, if it, it can be an external URL, internal URL, all of that stuff. But over here, if you change the page to hash contact page, what will happen is that the URL fragment on the top, the URL fragment will say hash contact page because it's trying to use intelligently, you know, use that kind of fragment setting push state over here. So to override that, we actually say options.data URL equal to contact plus index. And by doing this, you effectively prevent this kind of thing from happening. So I'll just quickly run you through the edit page before. So the edit page is all again very straightforward. You have a button over here which just says data rel back, will just push you to the previous page. And it's a cancel button, there's an edit and there's a save button. And some part of the content which I've clipped out is over here. You've got a label which is known as name, uh, sorry, uh, which is uh, an input which is known as name, and a phone over here. So the phone number, I want you to pay a little attention to the list over here. I have one list ID over here, 
which is called add phone button container and I'm going to be listening to events on add phone button container and not on the button itself and I'll actually be going into details about why I'm doing that but ultimately what you need to know is that there's a list ID with this and there is a button called add phone number so one more thing one small side note is that if you want to add a new contact I'm going to be reusing the edit page but instead I'll be passing minus one as the index so I for show add page all I'm just going to do is I'm going to say show edit page and pass minus one as the thing so first thing again decorate the basic elements by saying hash edit page dot page and assume that the request is for adding a new item that means I create a blank item and if index is not minus one I just pick up pick it up from the phone book so this way it works seamlessly like whether regardless of whether you're actually trying to edit it or create a new one and it sets the name input text box so all you're doing is saying hash name entry and you're setting the value as this. this is all very straightforward so now comes probably one of the most important regions over here how do you dynamically update the UI so the page is already shown like if I show you over here now if I go to the add and over here if I see I can add any number of phone numbers so this is what I found is one of the trickiest part of jQuery mobile when I was starting to learn it is how do you modify the UI if I just go and if I just append a list item over there it does not work and if I have a relatively more complex thing like an input and things like that that absolutely didn't work so what I do over here is I have a function called create phone field which I'll define later and it accepts a phone number which is a value yeah sorry so how do I know like how do so obviously when I'm clicking when I'm I dynamically adding something so that is known that happens that's an event app that gets triggered only after the user is touched right so yeah we'll get back to this so there are other there are see the thing is that there are other there are more than ways one ways of doing it so what I'm showing you is just one of the ways so what I do first is that I remove all of the I go pick up phone edit list and I run a small jQuery selector and I say li as long as it's not last remove it because the thing is that the page state does not change so for example if I add three items over here I click save and I edit another phone number these div elements are still in place so what I need to do is I need to clean up to clean up I need to remove it so this is one more gotcha that you need to remember as far as working with this so like if you load a new page if you load a new link or something you assume that the entire DOM has been refreshed to its original pristine state but that's not the case over here so again we go to each of the phone numbers existing already and you say create phone field with this particular thing and you go to the add phone button container you unbind it because it would have been bound previously again it was it's not in a pristine state it's in the same state it was last time so if you have a click handler have another click handler and the next time you open the page you're going to end up having with two events being fired instead you say unbind and you click and you know you what is that bind it to this dot create phone field so as far as create phone field is concerned you create an id phone hyphen and with some temporary var random var variable over here and you again you pick up a list item over here a label and an input it's relatively straightforward so over here you say add phone button container dot before phone field and this is again straightforward but most importantly over here you need to again refresh the list view you need to refresh the list view and you need to say phone field phone field is basically the this is phone field over here so when you create this this is what is going to be created by the previous pieces of code it says label for phone 3 is phone now like phone number input type is text id is phone 3 value is this and you say phone field dot find input dot text input because jquery mobile does not know that you have created a new dom element so what you need to do is you need to find the input dom item over there the jquery selector and then you need to run text input on that which will actually go and apply all of the css classes such that it looks nice over there if you don't do that it will look like a regular webkit text entry box <coughs> oh there's water here so if you actually see so now there's one important thing which I'm going to show you is like again if why did I actually hook on to add phone button container but like before what I had done when I was starting out with jQuery mobile what I did is I actually listened for an event on this A and I had this thing called add phone button and what I did was I thought I had to add an item before 
this li over here so what did i do i said when this event is fired dollar this which would refer to my current item dot parent dot before and that made perfect sense you know because my html that i outputted is like that but if you actually see the code if you actually see it inside the inspector if this is my a so dollar parent actually is a div so what i need to say is dollar dot parent dot parent dot parent dot before which becomes much more unintuitive that is why i say it's in fact it's best if you can just refer to absolute ids everywhere as much as possible instead of trying to do parent or trying to you know use relative dom items over there so back to the yeah oh clone a dom element so it should be possible but i'm also like i thought of using clone initially but that would have been you know a very straightforward solution why i'm trying to do it this way is that so that people understand how to use you know how to redecorate the item but it should be possible perfectly possible to clone in fact sometimes it's actually an easier thing to do more than uh, this but then again the problem with clone is that i don't know if the behavior of clone but does it even clone any event listeners that have been put inside the dom because then it might not probably not be a okay again i it should be possible so for the save button what we do is we unbind again because it would have been bound in the previous time you had opened the edit page and on the click you pass the index the self because of javascript self and this nonsense and you call this dot save item you again use the options dot data url set edit and pass what that a particular index over there and you change the page so again it's extremely straightforward over here at least it seems straightforward for me if you have some problem probably i should come back and you know explain it to you and saving to phone book is again very straightforward you take the index you say e dot data dot index you pick up the item so in the item again this is all regular jquery selectors you say name entry the attribute and for phone i just need an array of all of the values inside this so what i do is i say phone edit list dot find input and i run a map over this and i just return the attribute value for each of the items that selected that match the selector it seems a little complicated but it's the simplest way of finding all of the values of the phone book inside the particular thing and returning it so and again you save it you push it to the phone book if index is minus 1 which means it's a new addition to the uh, uh, thing or you save it to the phone book by using self dot phone book you again call the refresh phone book by using refresh phone book what it will do if you remember is that it actually goes erases all of the old uh, erases all of the old uh, list items inside the original dom and then it modifies the page and you change the page back to home page and then you're done so anyway if you have any questions about this you can email me my email is skyronic@gmail.com and that's pretty much it i mean i probably got done soon enough So no questions. Cool. Uh, whether the event was got your time. Uh, and uh, what did what did you like about the event? Any uh, specific aspect? No internet. No. What did you like? <laughs> <laughs> I like I like that it was no internet. Okay. Uh, anything else? Fun. Okay, the voting for the job. And uh, uh, what about the program itself? Uh, All the tasks are on the board. All the tasks are good. What about the module tasks?
Thank <laughs> you. 